All right, let's see how we can differentiate 1 plus x plus x squared in the parentheses and then raised to the 19th power. So this is a composition of two functions. We will have to use the chain rule. And notice that the outer function is the 19th power, right? So let me do that on the side for you guys. So I will denote that by little f, and that will be a box to the 19th power. And this right here is the inner function. I will just put that down as g, which is 1 plus x plus x squared. Okay? All right, so go ahead and differentiate a box to a 19th power. And you know it, it's going to be 99, a box, and then to the 98th power after the power rule. And for this right here, just go ahead, differentiating 1 will get 0. Differentiating x, we get 1. Differentiating x squared, we get 2x. And it has two terms, so just be sure you use the parentheses. Now, take this, put it in the box, and multiply. That will be the construction of the chain rule, and that will be the answer. So let me just write that down right here for you guys. We have 99, and do not use the box for the answer. Put down parentheses, and then the input here is this, which is 1 plus x plus x squared, and then raised to the 98th power. And lastly, we just multiply by this, which is the derivative of the inside. Parentheses, 1 plus 2x. Yeah, that's it. There's nothing else that we can do to simplify this expression, so I'm just going to box it as how it is. That will do it. Let's see how we can differentiate 5x to the 6th power plus 2x to the 3rd power in the parentheses and then raised to the 4th power. So this right here is a composition of two functions, and we are going to use the chain rule. And the outer function is this to the 4th power, right? And let me just put it down on the side for you guys. I will denote the outer function with f, and then we are going to draw a box and raise that to the fourth power. And for the inner function, it's just that, and that's denoted by g, and we get 5x to the sixth power plus 2x to the third power. Now, what's the derivative of a box to the fourth power? You guessed it, this is just going to give us 4 box to the third power. Same thing, bring the 4 to the front and minus 1, that's how, what we have. Next, we differentiate this. Well, the derivative of 5x to the sixth power is 30x to the fifth power after we use the power rule. And for this one, do the same thing. Power rule, we get 6x squared. All right? And notice that, in fact, here we can factor things out. Like we have 30 and also 6. So we can factor out a 6. And then x to the fifth, x squared, we can factor out x squared. So we are left with 5 and then x to the third power and then plus 1. So we'll be using this right here for the g prime. Okay, good. And then this is where the magic happens. We are going to put this in the box and then we multiply. And that will be the answer. So that's going to come back and write down capital F prime of x. Firstly, we have 4. And don't write down box, put down parentheses instead, right? And then the inside is that, so we will have the 5x to the 6th power plus 2x to the 3rd power. Notice the inside stays the same, right? And then to the 3rd power. So far, so good. And then we differentiate the inside, which we did that right here already, and that's what we have to multiply, and that's the part for the chain rule. So we will multiply by this, which is 6x squared times 5x to the 3rd power plus 1. Okay, that's pretty much it. But in the end, of course, we have 4 times 6. We can work that out. And we can also put the x squared all the way in the front. So we will do that. So 24x to the second power. And then we have that, which is 5x to the sixth power plus 2x to the third power. And lastly, oh, and then another third power. And lastly, we have that, which is 5x to the third power plus 1. This is not t, this is a plus. So that's it, right? This is actually the answer in the back of the book as well. Like this. Okay, let's see how we can differentiate x plus 1 over x in the parentheses and then to the fifth power. Well, let's just go ahead and write down the answer for this. Firstly, we will have to use the power rule, right? Bring the power to the front and then minus 1, so we get 5 parentheses. And the input stays the same, so we keep it x plus 1 over x. And then we will have that to the fourth power. And then we continue by using the chain rule, because the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 over x, well, is negative 1 over x squared. 
and because he has two terms so be sure you use a parentheses like that so that will be it all right that will be it and I will say you should remember the derivative, the derivative for 1 over x because it's really common so let me just remind you guys how we can do it when we differentiate 1 over x this is the same as differentiating x to the negative 1 power and then we do the power rule bring this to the front and minus 1 so we get negative and then x to the negative 2 and then we can bring this down to the denominator so we get a negative 1 over x squared so that's how we get this right here let's see how we can differentiate e to the tangent theta so this right here by now shouldn't be too bad let's just go ahead and write down the answer when we differentiate e to the something well that part repeats first right so we just have e to the tangent theta and then we use the chain rule multiplied by the derivative of the in the function and the derivative of tangent is secant squared so we just multiply by secant squared and the input is theta yeah and uh, usually this is okay um, you can put this in the front or you just leave it like this this is totally okay so now we'll do it let's see how we can differentiate 2 to the t to the third power so here we have to use the chain rule and we see that the input is t to the third power so let's go ahead and write it down on the side well i'll just write down little f to be 2 to the box and then the box has t to the third power and i'll denote that by g and again if you don't want to write down a little f and little g just keep track that's fine too but anyway what's the derivative of 2 to the box well you have to remember your exponential derivatives the derivative of 2 to the variable right here we will get 2 to the same thing so 2 to the box but we have to multiply by ln of the base so we multiply by ln 2 all right so you remember that and then of course we can just do this g prime is just 3t squared now we put this in the box and multiply that's the idea so all in all we will get f prime of t here we have 2 raised to the box which is t to the third power and then we multiply by ln2 and then we multiply by 3t squared right so that's pretty much it and keep in mind though we only have the two except the ln and just to avoid confusion we usually like to have like the constant multiple and also the polynomial part all the way in the front of like the letter functions like ln and things like that so perhaps I'm just going to write it as and of course do not multiply the 2 and the 3 I will just write it as 3t square and then 2 to the t to the third power and then lastly I'll put down ln2 so I think this is a pretty good presentation for the final answer let's see how we can differentiate 1 over the cube root of x squared minus 1 and before you jump into the quotient rule let me show you because we only have a 1 on the top we can actually just change this into a power form and then use the power rule and also the chain rule for this right check this out firstly we see that the cube root it's the same as 1 third power so we can rewrite that as 1 over parentheses with 1 third power here and then with x squared minus 1 inside and the beauty is this right we have only a 1 on the top we can put this up and then make that power negative that's all so this is really the same as parentheses with x squared minus 1 inside and then raised to the negative 1 third power and then we can just look at this as the inside function and then the outside function is to the negative 1 third power so that's the idea okay so let me just do the work right here for you guys so the outside function i will just write it down like this so we have a box raised to the negative one third and then the inside is this which is just x squared minus one differentiating this we can just use the power rule bring the power to the front minus one so the outside function will give you the derivative negative one third and then we will have a box and then negative one third minus one is negative four over three all right <laughs> and then we differentiate this we get just 2x pretty good and of course here's the thing we put this inside the box and we multiply and that will be the answer so i think this is okay even though you have negative 4 over 3 power you can also bring that down per perhaps that's write it down right here first 
f prime of x. Right for the whole thing, we have negative one third, and then we have don't use a box, use a parentheses, and then we have the x squared minus one inside raised to the negative fourth power, and then we also have to multiply by the two x. Right, so this is the construction for the uh, derivative with the box. And here we have the negative exponent, so we can bring this down to the denominator, and then of course we can put this on the top. So on O, we have negative, and then let's put on the 2x here, over, here we have the 3, and then parentheses with this inside, x squared minus 1, bring that down so we get a positive 4 over 3 power, and if you want to write the third power as the cube root, that's fine, but I will box it right here. And uh, if you prefer, you can, as I said, you can write this as negative, or just put on this right here, or you can write it as negative 2x over 3, and then over 3 power, I'll change that to the cube root. And then you can put the fourth power on the outside or the inside. Usually the inside looks better, so we will write, write it like this, parentheses, and then we have the x squared minus 1 like this, and then we have the fourth power right here. Yeah, but if you leave the answer like this, this is totally okay. Okay, we are going to differentiate the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x. Yeah, we just had to use the chain rule a few times. It's not so bad. Check this out. But let me remind you guys how to differentiate square root first. So. If we are differentiating just a square root of x, we first look at the square root as the one-half power. So this right here, it's the same as differentiating x to the one-half power. And this way, we can just use the power rule. Bring the power to the front and then minus one. So we get one-half and then x. One-half minus one is negative one-half. And then next, we can bring this part down to the bottom, and we get x to the positive one half on the bottom, but that's the same as the square root. So this right here is one over two, and then we have the square root of x. And I would recommend you guys to go from here to here. Just remember it because you will be dealing with square root quite often. Okay, here we go. Y prime. We are going to differentiate this outside square root. So we will have 1 over 2 of square root of the inside. So 1 over 2 square root, right? And then these are the inside that we are talking about. So let me just perhaps put this on in red. So I'm just going to write them down. x plus square root of x plus the square root of x. But we're not done yet. Here is the first chain rule we're going to use. So open the parentheses because we have three things. <laughs> Check this out. Differentiating x, we get 1. That's good. Then we are going to add. OK, we see the square root again. So that will be 1 over 2. And we have the square root, right? And here is the inside. So I'm going to keep the inside right here x plus the square root of x. Yeah. But not done yet. Because you see, here we have that inside function, so we have to differentiate that again because of the chain rule. The derivative of x is 1, okay? And then the derivative of the square root of x is that. Hey, we have to add 1 over 2 square root of x. Huh? Just like this. You see, the blue part is the derivative of this. And then the red part is the derivative of, of that. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to be bothered simplifying this. I'm just going to keep it as how it is. You can probably get a common denominator and then just multiply things out. I, I think I might do that. But let me box this first. Because this is definitely OK. But what I was saying is, no, that's, that's just keep it as how it is. Okay, we are going to differentiate cotangent square and then the input is sine theta. So for this one, let's just practice without drawing the boxes and all that. But before we do anything, well, this right here means what? Remember, the two right here means that we have these things inside. So I'll put on a big parenthesis with cotangent. 
and then the input here is sine theta and then on the very outside we have this square all right so now you see this is actually a composition of three <laughs> functions the very outside is a square and the next we have cotangent and then the very inside is the sine function all right so here we go this is how the derivative will look like first off we are going to do the power rule for the outside function so you know put the power to the front and then minus one therefore we get two and then the inside stays the same so let's just go ahead and write down cotangent of the sine theta inside like this and to the first power so that's it right and then next we are going to continue by using the chain rule we look at the inside and differentiate that differentiating cotangent we get negative but cosecant square so this right here will give us and that's multiply right so multiply negative cosecant square and the input here stays the same so we just put down parentheses with sine theta like this so we differentiate cotangent we get this and then the input stays the same but we're not done yet because we have one more here what's the derivative of sine theta cosine theta so we just have to multiply that right here so you see that this is the chain reaction that we have and at the end perhaps we'll just put the negative on the outside and then just write things down mm, maybe we'll put a cosine theta all the way in the front as well so this is what we're going to have negative right here and then we have the two right here and then the cosine theta perhaps let's just put it all the way in the front because it only has one input theta so maybe that's a good idea and next we don't really need parentheses we can just write down cotangent of sine theta and then lastly we have that part which is cosecant square of sine theta yeah and don't ask me to do the second derivative you can try it and let me know how it goes but i'm not going to do it this is enough that's it so here we go i'm just going to write down f prime of t we start with the very outside the derivative tangent will give us secant square and then this input stays the same so we'll just keep it here we have the secant and then of cosine t and keep in mind the cosine t is inside of the secant so they do not cancel out this is the input of secant it's not secant t times cosine t all right so just keep it as how it is all right what's next of course chain rule inside right just forget about this because we did it already now differentiating secant of this well the derivative of secant is what secant times tangent and we keep the same input so we will have secant of this input which is cosine t and then multiply by tangent of this input which is cosine t right, once again the derivative of secant is secant tangent and the input stays the same lastly we multiply by the derivative of the very inside the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t so I'll just put on we multiply by negative sine t like this so that's pretty much it right this is like the big long chain reaction yeah and uh, if, i'm gonna test if you write this down that's totally okay but usually we like to have just like one little function all the way in the front and then the negative all the way in the front as well so let me put this down all the way in the front so we will have negative sine t right here and then we multiply by this so I'll just put on secant square of secant i know this is crazy secant but this is not secant to the third power because this is the input of that so keep it as how it is and then here we have cosine t parentheses parentheses lastly we have that which is secant of uh, cosine t and then tangent cosine t yeah this is definitely enough okay we are going to differentiate e to the z over z minus one power so notice that this part right here is the inner function and uh, we will have to use the quotient rule for that but firstly though when we differentiate e to the something well that part repeats first so let's just go ahead and write down e to this which is z over z minus one now for this 
we have to use the chain rule, right? We will have to multiply by the derivative of that, and that requires the quotient rule. Here we go. I'm going to just open a fraction bar, well, put on the fraction bar, and then we first square the bottom. So I will have z minus 1, and then we square that. Okay? And then for the top, remember we put on the bottom function first, which is z minus 1, and we multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative of z is equal to 1. And then we minus the top function, which is z. And then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of z minus 1 is just 1. So that's what we have. And here we can actually clean things up a little bit. So this times 1 is just same thing, right? z minus 1. And then we will have to minus z right here. And we see that z and minus z cancel. So we just have negative 1 over that. So lastly, we'll just write down the answer like this. So it really depends how you want to write it. Perhaps we can just put negative right here. And then this part on the numerator, so we will just have e raised to the z over z minus 1. And then over this for the denominator, which is z minus 1, parentheses, and we square. Yeah, so this is what we have. Looks pretty cool in my opinion. We are going to differentiate square root of x over x plus 1. Well, the outside function is the square root. And let's go ahead and write it down on the side. And I'll just put down square root of a box. And then the inside is this. g for the inside, which is x over x plus 1. Differentiating square root, well, we get 1 over 2 square root of a box. All right. And now, for this right here, yeah, we will have to use the quotient rule, all right? So let's go ahead and get that going. We are going to first square the denominator. So I'll just put down x plus 1, and then we square that. And then for the top, well, we first keep the bottom, which is x plus 1. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative of x is just equal to 1, so that's what we have. And then we are going to minus the top function, which is x. And we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so that's what we have. And it looks like we can simplify a little bit, because we see this is just x plus 1, and then minus x over the bottom is x plus 1 squared, and this and that cancel, so this is just 1 over x plus 1 squared, all right? Now, you know it, we are going to put this in a box, it's going to be pretty crazy, and then we are going to multiply this with that, and this is the chain rule part. And now let's go ahead and just put this down right here. y prime is equal to, first we have 1 over 2, and then open the square root. Inside here, we put down the g function, which is the original inside, right? So that's x over x plus 1. And then we multiply by the derivative of g, which is this that we found earlier, and I will just write it as 1 over parentheses x plus 1 squared. So that's pretty much it for the calculus part. And then we will just have to do some algebra to simplify this expression. And the way that we can do it is that we can take a look at the square root of x over x plus 1 and break it down into square root of x over square root of x plus 1. And of course, we will also have to worry about the domain, but you know, we just want to care about the expression for this kind of question. So yeah, we can talk about the domain maybe later on. But anyway, this right here, it's the same as saying, here we have 1 over, and let me put down a 2, and this is the same as square root of x over square root of x plus 1. And maybe we will have to say x is greater than 0, or maybe x is greater than negative, or x is greater than 0 for the domain issue. But then anyway, multiply by this, which is 1 over parentheses x plus 1 squared. And now, what exactly do we do with this though? Well, check this out. This square root, I'm actually going to replace that with the one-half power. And the reason is because, you see, if you just look at the bottom right here, we have this over that, right? We have x plus 1 squared over x plus 1 to the one-half power. So we can do 2 minus one-half, right? We can just subtract the exponent. So therefore, we will get 1 over this 2 stays right here, and this square root stays right here. And again, perhaps I'll just 
put this down right here for you guys just to make it more clear so this over that 2 minus 1 half we get 3 over 2 and that will be the new power and we'll put on parentheses x plus 1 to the 3 half power so that's the idea that's how we simplify it and this is the answer in the back of the book yep, just like that okay we are going to differentiate x squared times e to the negative 3x and this is an example that we will have to use the product rule and also the chain rule for the derivative so let me just show you guys how we can work this out and now show you guys the scratch work on the side and also the box on the side so here we go y prime we are going to use the product rule first because this is the product of this and that we will first keep the first function which is just x squared and we multiply by the derivative of the second derivative of this well e to the something we first repeat that so e to the negative 3x and then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the inside because that's the chain rule part and the derivative of negative 3x is negative 3 so I'll just put it down like this so that's the first part of the product rule after that we are going to add the second part which is e to the negative 3x and then we multiply by the derivative of the first derivative of x squared is 2x and that's it that's all we have and of course you can just kind of rewrite this in a nicer way we put a negative 3 all the way in the front and then we have x squared and then e to the negative 3x and perhaps i'll put this in the front so we add 2x e to the negative 3x so this is what we have now let me show you guys the breakdown so as we can see this is our first function and that's the second function we're using the product rule so i will just write it down for you guys and uh, let me just write it as x squared times e to the negative 3x right let me try it without writing down the f and g from now on and see how that goes okay differentiate this we just get 2x and then differentiate this well this is the part that we will have to use the chain rule so let me do that on the side so for this part we do e to the box and then the inner function is negative 3x differentiating e to the box we get e to the box differentiating negative 3x we get negative 3 and now we can just put this in the box and then multiply so that's how we get e to the negative 3x times negative 3 so again this part right here is for the product rule and this part right here is for the chain rule for that now this times this right it's the first part of the answer and then this times that it's the second part of the answer and then at the end we'll just write it down together all right let's go ahead and do the derivative for e to the negative 2x times sine of 3x so this is an example that we will have to use the product rule and also the chain rule here we go i'm going to write down y prime for the derivative and the product rule says we are going to keep the first function which is just e to the negative 2x and then we are going to differentiate the second function well the derivative of sine is cosine so let's go ahead and write that down and we keep the input as how it is and then we are going to use the chain rule because the derivative of the inside the derivative of 3x is a 3 so be sure you multiply by that 3 so that's the first part all right oops oh technically it should be in red and the second part is we add the second function which is sine of 3x and we differentiate the first function the derivative of e to the negative 2x you first keep that as how it is right it repeats so you have e to the negative 2x and then we use the chain rule we multiply by the derivative of the inside the derivative of negative 2x is a negative 2 so we multiply by negative 2 so this is the construction of the derivative and at the end we'll just write things down in a nice order that we like and you can also factor out e to the negative 2x but there's no need unless you want to do the second derivative in that case factoring out e to the negative 2x is a good idea but for this one let's just write it as 3 all the way in the front and then we have e to the negative 2x and then we have cosine of 3x like this and then we have negative 2 and then we have sine well let's write a 
e to the negative 2x first. Just to keep the same order. So we have e to the negative 2x and then sine of 3x. So that's it. Okay, we are going to differentiate e to the at times sine of bt. So here, we will have to use the product rule, and then we will see we also have to use the chain rule. So have a look. I'm going to write down f prime of t. This is our first function, so we first keep that. So we have e to the at, and we multiply by, right? So this is the second part. Product rule says we multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine is cosine, so let me write that down. And the input stays the same. But we are not done yet, because if you look at the inside, bt, b is just a constant, just like you know, number 5, number 6, number 8, or things like that. When we differentiate bt, we get b. So we will have to use the chain rule, and we just multiply by b right here. So this right here is the first part of the product rule. All right, And then we are going to add the second function, which is sine of bt. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of e to the something is just that repeat, right? e to the at in this case. And then you see that here, a is just a constant. So the derivative of at is a. So we will have to multiply by a right here. So yeah, product rule and chain rule and all that good stuff. And in the end, perhaps I'll just put this in the front and then also the a and b in the front. So I will write this down for you guys. So in this case, I will just have b, e, a, t. And I look, no, no, I see this is pretty funny that I eat, but anyway. This right here, multiplied by cosine of b, t, and then a in the front, right? So we have plus a and also this in the front e to the at's power and multiplied by sine of bt. So I think this right here is a pretty good look for the answer. Now, let's just go ahead and kind of talk about the construction behind all this, just to make it super clear. This is the first part of the function, which is e to the at. And then this right here is the second part of the function, so I will write this as sine bt. Well, when we differentiate e to the at, we get e to the at, but we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Right? So we multiply by a, like that. And then when we differentiate sine, we first get cosine, and then the input stays the same, and we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we multiply by b, like that. So this is just the product rule part. And you see, we do this times this, and this times that. So that's the first part of the answer, and that's the second part of the answer. And again, be really careful with the chain rule part. So the blue part is the where we will have to use the chain rule, all right? And um, yeah, perhaps I'll make it super, super clear for you guys, but you know, if you are okay with this already, you can just watch the next video. But let's see how we can get the derivative from here to here, all right? So if we have e to the box, and then the input right here is a t. Well, differentiating e to the a, e to the box, we get e to the box. And differentiating a t, where a is just a constant, we just get a. And you see, we put this in the box and multiply. That's how we get this. Now for this, we have the sign of b t. So we will have sign of a box. And the inner function is b t. Differentiating sign, we get cosine of a box, yeah? And then differentiating bt, we just get b. So you see, we put this in the box and multiply, and that's how exactly we get that. Okay, this is a pretty crazy one. Check this out. We'll differentiate this function here. Notice that this is a product of two functions, and yeah, we will have to use a chain rule for this and that as well. But anyway, let's just, let's just go ahead and get to work. First off, let me write down f prime of x, and again, product rule says, we are going to keep the first function, so we will have parentheses 2x minus 3 raised to the fourth power, and then we multiply by the derivative of the second. The derivative of this, well, we first bring the power to the front and then minus 1. So we will have 5 and then x squared plus x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. And notice that the inside stays the same. Now, we are going to multiply by the derivative of the inside because of the chain rule. 
Well, let's see, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then the derivative of plus x is just plus 1. And because this has two terms, so be sure we put down a parenthesis. All right? So that is it for the first part. But we're not done yet because we have to do the second part of the product rule, which says we will have to add the second function, which I will write it down in red, right? x squared plus x plus 1 raised to the fifth power. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of the first, well, we bring the power to the front and then minus 1, so we will get 4 parentheses, and this right here stays the same, and raised to the third power, like that. And you know it, we are going to use the chain rule for this as well, so we multiply by the derivative inside, which is actually going to give us just a 2. So that's pretty good. And now let's see if, really, if there's any simplification that we can do for this. Uh, there are a few things that we can do. For example, we see that this is raised to the fourth power, but this right here is raised to the third power, so we can factor out the third power, right? The smaller exponent. So let's do that. 2x minus 3 to the third power. And moreover, we see that this right here is to the fourth power, and this right here is to the fifth power, so we can factor out this to the fourth power. So x squared plus x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. Other than that, that's it, huh? So I'm just going to write down the rest in a big parentheses. Remember, we took out 3, so right here we have one more factor. So we'll write down parentheses 2x minus 3 to the first power. And then here we have the 5, so I'll just put it down in the front. And then here we have this factor, so I will still keep it in blue, which is 2x plus 1. And then we add. Okay, we took out four of them, so we have one more factor left. So I'm going to write down parentheses x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, and lastly, we have 4 times 2, which is 8. So perhaps I'll just put it down right here at the end. And let me do this. So I wrote this down in black and also I'll put it over blue. So it's dark blue, just to. Combine this and not together to be 8. And thankfully, this is out already because I have no more space to do this. But anyway, perhaps inside here, let's just multiply things out and then combine like terms. Yeah, that's how you end up with the answer in the back of the book. But anyway, have a look right here. So for this part, I would like to just multiply the parentheses first, right? So we get, let's see, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and then this times this is. 2x times 1 is just 2x. Let me put it down here because next we see this times this is negative 6x. Together we get negative 4x. And then next we do this times that which is negative 3. Alright? And then let's see, multiply this out, we get 20x squared. This and that is minus 20x. And lastly, we have the minus 15. Done for that. And lastly, we distribute this backwards, alright? So we will get plus 8x squared plus 8x plus 8. Whew. And then in the end, of course, we can combine terms, but let me just write down everything. So here we have parentheses 2x minus 3 to the third power times that, which is x squared plus x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. And lastly, I'll just combine like terms. So we see that this and that together is 28x squared. Good. And then we have negative 20x plus 8x, so that will be minus 12x. And lastly, here we have minus 15 plus 8, so that will be minus 7. Alright, so let me just double check. Yeah, that's the answer in the back of the book. So here is the deal. This is the answer. And for this one, yeah, just kind of practice how you go from here to here and then do the simplification and end up the answer like this. Yeah. Okay, here we are going to differentiate this function and notice that it's a product of two functions. So we will have to use the product rule. Not only that, we have this to the second, third power, this to the sixth power. Yeah, we will have to use the chain rule as well. But anyway, let's just go ahead and get to work. I'm going to write down g prime of x for the derivative. Product rule in action, we are going to keep the first function. So x squared plus 1 and then to the third power. And the next, we look at this right here and differentiate it, right? 
Okay, so bring the power to the front and then minus 1, so we will get 6 parentheses. And the input stays the same, so x to the third power plus 2, and then raised to the fifth power. But we are not done yet. Here we have to use the chain rule. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x to the third power plus 2 is just 3x squared. So now we are done for that part. But that's just the first part of the product rule. Next, we are going to add the second function. I'm going to write that down in red. x to the third power plus 2 raised to the sixth power. And then we multiply by the derivative of the first. The derivative of this right here, again, put the power to the front and then minus 1. So it gets 3. And the input stays the same, which is x squared plus 1. And the power right here is 2. So that's what we have. But we're not done yet. Chain rule. Multiply by the derivative of these things, right? So we multiply by 2x. Okay, so far so good. And now let's see if there's anything that we can simplify. We can factor things out. So for example, if you see this part and that part, we can factor out uh, the square. Yeah. So that's going to do that. Parentheses x squared plus 1 squared. Good. And then for the red part, this is to the 5th power, this is to the 6th power, so we can factor out to the 5th power. So parentheses x to the 3rd power plus 2 to the 5th power. And next we see that here we have 3 and we have a factor 3 right here as well. So we can factor out 3. Right? And so far they are just all multiplying. And we also see that we have x squared and this is x to the 1st power, so we can factor out an x. So these right here are the common factors. And now let's go ahead and put down the leftover. So firstly, we have this to a third power, but we only factor out two of them. So we have parentheses x squared plus 1 to the first power left. And then we will have the 6 right here. And let me just put this down in red, just to keep the same color. This is out. This is out, but then this was x squared. This is just x, so we have one more x here. Good. Okay, for the second part, we add this. Well, we need one more factor, right? Because we only took out five of them. So we will have a parentheses with x to the third power plus two to the first power. Three is out. This is out. X is out, but we need this two in blue. So we multiply this by two. So far, so good. Looks really nice. And uh, perhaps we'll just clean this part. So I will take this and distribute. We will get 6x to the third power plus 6x. And then take this and distribute. We get plus 2x to the third power and plus 4. Combine this and that. And everybody here is in the parentheses, right? So we'll combine. And we will end up with 8x to the third power plus this 6x plus 4. Everything has a factor 2. So perhaps I'll factor that out as well. So we have 2 parentheses 4x to the third power plus 3x plus 2. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Now I'm just going to put everything together. So we have this, 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 and that multiplying. Check this out. We have the 3 and the 2 multiplying together. All right. So that would be what? That would be purple. It's a 6. Right? So it's like that, okay? <laughs> but anyway, uh, we have the x in the front, so perhaps I'll just keep the same color just to make it pretty. And we have that which is parentheses x squared plus 1 to the second power. And then we have that which is x to the third power plus 2 raised to the fifth power. And lastly, we have this part, right? So I'll just put on this parentheses in black and then we have all that. And I will just keep this in red, and I guess 4x to the third power plus 3x plus 2. And then close parentheses. Yeah, so that's it. Right? That's it. Okay, let's see how we can differentiate this function. Now I know this is going to be a big one, but it's okay because we are doing this together. Just calm down first. We can finish it, okay? And Let's just go ahead and work out the quotient rule and we will also have to use the chain rule. And let's not write down any scratch work because if we do, it will be a lot. So let's see if we can kind of just work out everything. Here we go. 
Firstly, let's write down h prime of r. r is the variable. Okay, so let's draw a big fraction bar. We are going to square the bottom first for the, for the quotient rule. So let me put it down right here. 2r plus 1 to the fifth power. This is the original. And we have to square that because the quotient rule says so. Now for the quotient rule, we are going to put down the bottom function. So it's 2r plus 1 raised to the fifth power. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the top. So just focus on this. To take the derivative, we do the power rule first, right? Bring the 3 to the front and then minus 1. So it gets 3. And we keep the inside, which is r squared minus 1. And then minus 1 here, which is 2. But we are not done yet. Because here is where we have to use the chain rule. We multiply by the derivative inside. The derivative of r squared minus 1 is just 2r, so I'll just multiply 2r right here. So again, this is the derivative for the top. And now, for the second part of the top, we will have to subtract because this is the quotient rule we subtract. We keep the top function, which is parentheses r squared minus 1 to the third power, and then we multiply by the derivative of the bottom. So again, we will have to use the power rule first. Bring the 5 to the front, and then minus 1. So we get 5 parentheses 2r plus 1, and then 5 minus 1. We get the fourth power. And lastly, again, chain rule, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2r plus 1 is just a 2. So we multiply by 2 right here. So that's what we have. Wow. Yeah, I know. So take a moment just to take a look. And uh, I know the question is, what do we do next, right? Well, here's the thing. We're going to factor things out because we do see we have some common factors. And then try to simplify as much as possible. So here we go. Let's put down. OK, I see that we have a 2 and 2 in common, so we can factor out that 2 all the way in the front. So I guess that's pretty good. OK, so that's the blue 2 that we have. And then next, let's factor out this and that. But this is to the second power. This is to the third power, so we can factor out the second power. So let me just put down parentheses r squared minus 1 to the second power. All right. And then here we have the fifth power, right? And then here we have the fourth power. So let's factor out the fourth power. So put down parentheses 2r plus 1 to the fourth power. I think that's all the things that we can factor. So now I'm going to put down parentheses. For the first part, we have the 2r plus 1 to the first power left. So I'll put that down right here 2r plus 1, right? Because we took out four of them, we have one more right here and we also have the 3 and also the r so I'll just put this down right here 3 r like that yeah that's the, all we have and then we are going to minus this is out by only two of them so we have one more of this so we have r squared minus 1 yeah and then we have the 5 I'll put it here the 2 is out and this quantity is out right here as well so that's what we have. And then all divided by to the fifth power to the ten, uh, tooth power, just multiply the powers. So on the bottom, we get 2r plus 1 to the tenth power. Now, let's see what we can do. This and that can reduce, right? So they cancel. And of course, 4 minus 10 is negative 6. And you just keep down the bottom. So this right here becomes the sixth power. So that's pretty good. And now for this power, we can actually multiply the other and kind of simplify it. So we see 3r times 2r is 6r squared. And then we have plus 3r. And then distribute, we get minus 5r squared and then plus 5. And then this and that together is r squared and then plus 3r and then plus 5. And that's the most that we can do. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah, I'll just write down the final answer for you guys. So finally, we have two parentheses r squared minus one squared. And then we have all that, which is r squared plus 3r plus 5. And all divided by this to the sixth power. 
So all divided by 2r plus 1 raised to the 6th power. And this is it. Now do it.